It's very strange, I only hear it in one ear when there's complete silence. It literally comes in like that, when there's silence, it's sort of, there's a small pause. And then it comes in and it stops when I talk. And then also or some other noise comes in, so it's, it's very strange. Now, of course, you may not have heard that depending on your speakers and your sub arrangement. Basically, I hear a 49 hertz sine wave in my left ear only whenever there's some silence. Certainly the more I give my ears a break, the less of an issue it is, but it is basically persistent. Yes, yes, it's much more common for people to have a just indefinitely forever. Now that's annoying, I think. I think that sounds much more annoying than mine, which is just a bit odd like me. Multiplier, it sounds like you have free sub bass whenever you like, that sounds great. No, it's not a big deal, but it, it can get annoying. It's like you never actually hear complete silence. Now, if you look it up on the internet, I mean, there's there are a range of possible causes. They're not all because of listening to too much loud noises, uh, but I mean, certainly according to WebMD, and I, now I didn't go into all the scientific references to verify this, but according to WebMD, at least 90% of the causes are too much loud noise. And I think it's not a coincidence that my favorite note to play while sound designing was G0. Which happens to be 49 hertz exactly. I just don't think it's a coincidence. G's great. I mean, as I'm sure you've heard in various videos if you follow my channel, I tend to recommend E0s about the lowest to use. Certainly if you're making music for the club, it's a bit dangerous to go lower than E. E0 being 41 hertz. So G is lovely. It's a few notes higher, so it's a bit brighter, but it's still very definitely a deep bass note. And if, if you want to, at least in Ableton, if you want to play a G on the computer keyboard, you press G. It's nice and simple. I, I, that's a sort of simplicity I can wrap my head around. And F plays F. D plays E. That, that's where it all goes a bit swirly whirly. G is the main note I play. So I, it just can't be a coincidence that that's the sub bass noise I hear whenever there's some silence. This is not something to complain about. Tinnitus, tinnitus, I don't know if this is the correct pronunciation. Tinnitus, un, noises in your head that aren't really there. Not voices in your head, not, vo not voices in your head. Noises, sound in your head that's not really there. It's extremely common, depending on how you define it, between 10 to 20% of everybody has some form of tinnitus. Low frequency tinnitus, the sort of weird version I have, much more rare, but, but still not that special. Not, I'm, not, I'm not that special. Again, depending on how you define these things, maybe 1% or 2 or 3% of people have it at some stage. But I think it's fair to say that mine was caused by being an idiot, listening to music in headphones far too loud for far too long for far too many years. My young years. This is what I did for the first year, two years, maybe three years at a push. Now I'm much more sensible. This will sound stupid, but as a young producer, maybe in the first year or two of producing, I used to finish almost every session with painful ears, just purely because of listening too loud. Now I'm not saying never listen to loud music. In fact, it's very important to listen to loud music, especially for these genres that are designed to be listened to loud. Loud music is more exciting, more energetic, more fun, more emotional. It's just, it's better in every way, objectively. It's scientifically better to listen to loud music than quiet music. I wish someone had told me this when I was, I don't know, 19, 20 year old. It's fine to listen to music loud, but only do it for short periods of time. It's fine to listen to music loud, but only do it for short periods of time. Every 10 to 15 minutes or so, change the monitoring volume. It's fun to listen to music loud. It's very important to listen to music loud, not only as a producer, but also as a listener. It's important to enjoy what you're listening to when you're making it and enjoy what you're listening to when you're listening to it. Yeah, not to mention our listeners will listen to our music at a range of loudnesses. It's fine to blast your ears, just then give them a break. It's all about duration, that's what the science says. It's also good to regularly change volume because of Fletcher Monson curves and how we hear a different balance of frequencies at different loudnesses. Does our track sound and balance? Can we hear what we need to hear at different loudnesses? Here's something I wish I got told. Almost everyone that cares about their ears, so music producers, DJs, and so on, almost everybody at raves has earplugs. Yes, and this is important, it's not as fun, but what it will allow you to do is go. Maybe the current youngsters aren't quite as stupid as I was or we were, but certainly back when I was a 
18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old. We never, wore, at least I never wore earplugs. If you ever hear ringing after a rave, I mean, for most people it goes away quite soon, but for some people it stays. If you ever hear ringing, you should have wore earplugs. I never wore earplugs at raves. I stood in front of the biggest speakers, literally 15 foot, 16 giant speaker stacks. I stood right in front of them for hours. And it was great. It literally, it makes your clothes vibrate. That's when you know it's good. When the speakers are big enough, it's like the bass gives you a hug. It's brilliant. It's an experience and a half, but the way to do that is with earplugs. I didn't do that. Two and a half, three years in, I started wearing earplugs because basically what happened, I went to a rave warehouse project in Manchester, one of the early ones, and just stood in front of the biggest speakers for four or five hours, some large number of time, and I burst my eardrums to the point of it be, even, even being too loud at the back of the venue. I had to go home, it was really bad. And then I couldn't do any sound design for a month and that was also bad. So that was the point when I was like, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, this isn't quite right. How are people doing this? And then I spoke to some producers via the internet, Facebook, and it turned out they all wear earplugs. It is genuinely less enjoyable listening through earplugs than not with earplugs. It'll make things quieter, it'll roll off the high frequencies and just, I mean, it, it, it will make it less exciting. If you don't wear earplugs, you will damage your hearing. I mean, this. I'm not even special. This is something that a huge, maybe even 20, 30% of all sound designers and DJs experience. Too much loud noise damages your ears. And it's, I wish they just turned it down sometimes. It's difficult because what you really want is a loud bit for a short period of time and then it to get quieter. And in fact, that's what the best venues do. The best sound techs will literally ride the volume. They'll turn it up for the drop and then turn it down for the breaks. Turn it up for the main bits and then turn it down for the in between your bits. Not only does it make the drop more impactful, more emotional, more energetic, exciting, and so on, but it's also just better for your ears. The important thing here is duration, the amount of time at these loud levels. That's why, for example, you can hear a gunshot once at some distance and be fine. But if you heard a noise at that extremely high dB level, sustained, I mean, almost within seconds you'd have damage. Similarly, with, with an airplane noise. It's fine if, if there was a jet, I actually experienced this as a kid. I was at an air show, in case you're wondering. It's fine if a jet goes zoom right in front of you, so it's extremely loud or just very, very loud for say, I don't know, seven or eight or nine or 10 or 12 seconds, but then it's gone and it's fine. If you stood in front of a jet for 20 minutes or an hour and a half, then you damage your ears. I did think as a bit of a creative thing I could do to maybe put a ringing. The whole all the way through this video because then that'll be annoying and you'll be like oh, I wish Multiplier hadn't put a ringing noise the whole way through the video that's annoying now I'm mad I'm mad at Multiplier but and then and then I could have gone oh wasn't that annoying I bet you wish there wasn't a ringing noise the whole way through the video well if you listen to music too loud for too long that's what you hear that's what you'll experience for the rest of your life. So that could have been a creative and interesting thing to do from a storytelling perspective. But then I thought some of you might just click away or shout at me or, I don't know, call me names or just, just not even watch the video to get the point that I was trying to convey by putting a ringing noise the whole way through the video. In case you're wondering, this is the back of the studio. I am testing the main angle at the moment. Must remember to plug the microphone in if I want to use it. There's no cable there, that's weird. This is a message to my former, younger, multiplier self. If they invent time travel, pick up a leaf and give it to a, a dinosaur that doesn't normally eat leaves. That might be a nicer way to put a ripple in the fabric of a deterministic universe, which may or may not exist. A video for another day.